you're listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy with your host, Lori Watson, sex therapist and author of Wanting Sex Again, How to Rekindle Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage, and my couples therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews, who is joining us again this week. He yeah, is was off the last new week. prez <laughs> of our organization, and we're so proud of him. Yeah. I, I bragged about you last week. Oh, you did? I did. Awesome. Yes, and I yeah, told them fun. that you were off doing prez sort of duties. Well, it was, yeah. I know. All, all kinds of fun stuff in the mountains, so it was oh, really, really, really pretty. That's really great. Good. That is a place, the mountains of North Carolina, if you're looking for a place to take your significant other, yes. to take your partner the for a, a was set we talked we've talked about sex getaways before. <laughs> yes. It is that it is, is there. It is blowing one rock. That, blowing rock. Blowing yeah. rock. Okay. And today we're gonna talk about five mistakes men make in bed. Last week we talked about five mistakes women make in bed. Thankfully, this time I have Adam to help me yeah. Figure this out. Uh, or men, for us to straighten out the men, right? So you're, well, you're saying that men make mistakes in bed is what you're they saying. Do. There they are, do. There are yes. those mistakes. And they're terrified of them, of course, because yeah. nobody wants to think they're making the mistakes. But I really think a lot of it is not as technical. I mean, when men come into sex therapy, they ask me, you know, sort of what's the technique that drives her wild? That's what yeah. they want to know. But Because we're but, centered on performance, right? Like yes, men tend I, to be more centered on performance? Yeah, I, I agree. More on performance and also more genitally focused in mm. general. It's like giving a man a fish or teaching him to fish. Okay. I mean, I think these dynamics will help him across the board in terms of how he can really be better in bed. But, but I think that the first step, though, to me is like, admitting that there are ways to improve, right? Yeah. I think men have that in their head sometimes, but I think it's hard to say, I could be better, right? Yeah. Oh, I think that is so hard. You know, like I think, I think it's so hard for us as men to say, you know what? I could be better at sex. Let me go figure out how. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think even men with experience, yeah. they didn't necessarily have good feedback in those experiences, right? Yeah. So they don't know how their performance was. And when I say performance, I don't mean erections. I yeah. mean the woman's experience of yeah. how he touched her and how she felt together. about it. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I think that oftentimes men wait until there's a dysfunction. Yes. Right, because oh, the, these things yes. that we're talking about, right, are – ways that you improve before there's even a dysfunction. It may be when we're talking about mistakes that men make in bed, there may not be any kind of dysfunction that's going on. There may not be a, a point that says, would you agree with that? Like, I, I mean, totally it, agree with that. Like that that's like that, they, they won't seek help sort of. I mean, I mean, it's like a, somebody says, you know, why would I ever read a sex book? It's yeah. like you don't learn how to have sex from a book. Well, you, you could. You, yeah, could, you, you could pick could, up some pointers. You could learn a couple <laughs> of things. And I think the first thing I would talk about is – that men somehow or another think that her low desire translates to he's not attractive. Oh, yeah. He's not desirable. Oh, and yeah. this is such a killer, you know, because if he feels rejected in his very body and his sexual self, you know, and he feels unattractive, then he's going to stop initiating. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole thing is going to slow down. Yeah, I think that I don't know if that's a myth or not, but I feel like maybe it is that men want to be wanted in that way Absolutely. and want to be of desired. Course. Of course. Yeah. And so that is human need. Yeah. And know? especially in committed relationships that as men, we want to still feel wanted, desired. Like we are attractive, like or we want to jump us at the drop of a hat, right? right. I mean, every like once that's, in a while, every, every once, once in a while, while, every once in a while. But that yeah. that kind of, but more, I'm talking about like just that kind of desire and that kind of yeah. being attractive, passionate, to us. passionate. desire, yeah. body desire. And no, I think that's absolutely human. And I would say when women sit around and talk about it, or my female patients, mm -hmm. I mean, very few of them express that. They oh. they are much more in their heads about it like mm. you know yeah i think my husband's good looking he's got great hair he's like you know he works out or you know they'll yeah. they'll talk about it intellectually whereas men you know talk about it more robustly it's okay. like you know i you know she's got got a great behind she's, yeah. you know i mean they're like really into it yeah and i think she's so hot and it's almost like you can feel it the energy from him when he talks about mm. it and i just think that has kind of been beat out of women. They they just don't do that, and they don't even realize that their you know that their guy needs it. Yeah. So how how do men improve in that area? As you say, and just don't 
take it personally. I, when I that's think not that's there? the mistake. Is okay. he, she if she says she finds you attractive, she probably does, and her libido is probably not tied to your attractive level. I mean, her mm. libido can be repressed for so many different reasons that have nothing to do with whether you're an attractive sexual being or not. Okay. So yes, depersonalize it. Absolutely. You know, mm. and figure out the reasons for the low libido and take her at her word. I think for men, they think about it this way. You know, the only reason I wouldn't want to have sex with my wife or with my committed partner is because I was no longer attracted to her. Oh, so, yeah. You know, so if she doesn't want to have sex with me, that must mean the opposite, right? Yeah. She's not attracted to me. We apply our own standards to yeah. to our partner and expect, yeah. expect that to be the case uh-huh. as well. But unfortunately, women don't want to have sex for a myriad of reasons, which uh, I know is totally crazy because it's not like going to the dentist, right? right it's right. like, okay, I, I don't want to have this wonderful, pleasurable experience, which men yeah. are like, what? Yeah. You know, how crazy so, is so that? So it's not lowering the expectation, but it's changing the expectation, right? It's changing the understanding. Uh, the understanding you know, yeah. that, okay, she may really find you a desirable person, and you can be a very desirable man, even though she doesn't have libido. Uh, so yeah. get over okay. that. Awesome. Okay. Well, what's the second um, one? Okay. So the second one is getting frustrated because she is so slow. Mm. You know, I, men tell me all the time, it's like, oh, it's so much work to arouse a woman. Mm. I'm like, it. it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just accepting that reality. It is, and we all rue it too, trust me. You know, yeah. we, we all get it, you know, that it's a ton of work and it's a ton of work for a woman to kind of have that mental libido and that desire. And it's a ton of work for her to want to put in the time to have mm. her body warm up. I mean, yeah. it just, it is so different. Yeah. And that makes it difficult sometimes to figure out how to make that time in between that foreplay time between starting and her being fully aroused, how to make that enjoyable, right? Right. But it can be enjoyable. It's not, yes, it doesn't I, have to I be a wastesland. So. It doesn't I have mean, to be a drudgery to, for that to happen, I, right? I hope, I hope, I hope. I, hope, I, I hope mean, so. there, there are some men out there, and I can tell, you know, when they talk about it, like they love to touch their wife's body. They love mm. to touch the woman that they're with. And, and they get off on it. I mean, they are totally excited by touching. Yeah. And so it's it's not drudgery. It's like I would touch her all day long. I'd do anything she wanted. I'd stand on my head if she wanted me to. Yeah. You know, I mean, he really likes that. And so for him, I mean, that's the sexiest thing a man could say to a woman is just take your time, girl. Yeah. You know, just But I think there has relax to be and enjoy the ride. There has to be some genuineness behind that too. I think one of the things that I hear a lot from my couples is he's saying that but I don't really feel like he means it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it seems like that has to be really genuine and, and for men to really embrace that and it's be so okay. Different. It's but because it's so different, but just embracing that difference and saying, like you're saying, let's enjoy the ride. Let's enjoy the process mm-hmm. and really being meaningful about that and knowing that that's, I mean, that communicates care to her as well, right? I think and so. We'll just... and, and understanding it's physiological. It's not because she's not into it. It's because... His body is sort of full of gasoline and it lights up, you know, at just the slightest little bit. But her body doesn't have that gas. And so, you know, you have to take a long time to pour that gas in. It's a problem between the genders because we're so different. But it's not her fault that she takes Uh, so long. It's just the way her body is made. Yeah. Yeah, And that, that speaks to me of some things I've heard before about that men can unintentionally sometimes communicate that they think their wife is right. defective or broken. Right. Or she, needs to yeah. be needs to change that aspect of her. That's just inherent. Yeah. You know? In the female body. Yeah. I know. And I think if he expresses the frustration like, gosh, you know, or if he says, are you, are you getting anywhere? Is this working? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, slam. It just, just like, like totally just shut turn off. Down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that would not work. Yeah. It's like you just, I think as a woman, they want to feel that he loves touching her and he has all night. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also important, too. Like, if you're going to make that into an enjoyable thing and be genuine about that, that might just involve some conversation, right? Mm-hmm. About what, how she gets aroused what she enjoys in that, how fast or slow. I'd imagine that we like we talk about, too, everybody's different. Would you say that as well? I mean, while women generally sure. take longer, woman to woman, that's going to be different. Absolutely. And so understanding that, Absolutely. understanding that the pace may be My joke important. is that a woman who had had a child, her first child, came to me and said, you know, oh, I just, I just take twice as long as I used to take. I'm like, well, 
how, how long does it take? She's like, five minutes? <laughs> and I'm like, I gave her her money back. <laughs> Tell her to go I'm home like, and enjoy five it. Five minutes. Get over it, girl. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was really, really fast. And I think women at different states, like different mind states, yeah. you know, especially if there's been some seduction and flirting. It's like really her mind is turning on. Some mm. patient of mine recently said, well, I took you out to dinner and I flirted with you. So does that count in that first 20 minutes? <laughs> 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 She's like, well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So there has to be some of that that goes into it. Right. right. Does that change over time? Does you that mean flirt? like when we're really old, Adam? Is that what you're um, saying? <laughs> I wasn't implying that, Lori, but maybe. I mean, but I guess it could go the – I'm imagining it could – you know, maybe for some people it goes the other way that it gets faster over time. But I'm just wondering, does that I think like the gets, woman that's saying that it doubled in it yeah, doubled in time, double in time? Does it going to is it going to change? I mean, physiologically, right? Women lose hormones at right. such an accelerated rate compared to men that it's probably going to take them longer in general. But okay. I think in a committed coupleship, you kind of get good at it. You yeah. Know? yeah. I mean, and you know how to arouse each other. And so it becomes a little more efficient and you know what the other one likes. And, you know, okay. so I think sometimes that can help. Cool. Yeah. Well, how else can men be better? Uh, stop making those mistakes in bed. Okay. Mistakes. Okay. The third mistake, I believe, is that, like you said, they believe good sex is about, you know, their own performance. Mm. This is just a hard one. See, it's a hard one for me to get my mind around even, and I know it's true. You know, <laughs> it is just true. To, just to move away from that performance mindset mm-hmm. and that everything does it depends on how well we make her orgasm. Yeah. Right. I mean, that seems to be the. Okay. Well, I mean, I think you're saying something different, different. than probably what, what I even thought of. So you think basically, do you ring the bell and that's the performance? Yeah. yeah, and do that you we ring do her it, bell? Yes, and that we do it well, and that you do it well, and that okay. she that she, she really lays, likes what you're doing to her. That she walks away and says, "Best sex ever." Right, <laughs> like yeah. every time, yeah, every time, every time, it's better and better, and <laughs> yeah. our score just goes up and up and up. Right, I mean, your batting average is just yeah. like super yeah. ten. Well, because it's yeah. not, you know, it's performance. Like it's that it's better than uh-huh. you know that we're the ones that are going to satisfy her the best, and that we're all stars. Yeah, know? all stars. We're sex. <laughs> we're sex all stars. I mean, that's. I mean, it all goes back to. I mean, it's just sports metaphors all the time. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. We hit a home run. We scored a touchdown. <laughs> We that's did our right. touchdown dance. <laughs> victory. <you know>. Yeah. <laughs> victory. That's, that's right. I mean, yeah. that's what – yeah. So, I mean, I think you were thinking of it well, differently. I, I was probably thinking that men worry about their performance in terms of how hard they are, how erect they are, sure. how long the erection lasts, how yeah. long they can keep the erection. Like literally their body performance versus their technique performance and their connection to her. I mean, yeah. I think men are sometimes just way hung up about – that performance, good sex means their sexual organ is performing well. Yeah. I would say it's all tied together. If our penis doesn't perform well, mm-hmm. you know, like then the whole performance is shot. Like the whole thing is. <laughs> the curtain comes down. The curtain comes but down. Yeah, Adam, like, oh, you yeah. know that that's like not really how women climax most of the time. Yeah. Intellectually. I, intellectually, you know I know that. <laughs> Intellectually, I know that. And I think I think most men intellectually, well, maybe they don't, but I think, you know, they're trying to educate them. But I think for the most part, that's the case, but that's mm-hmm. not, it's all tied together to all whether together. whether we are doing well or not and whether we can say, because we don't just want to be good, Lori, yeah. we want to be great. <laughs> you know, we want to be, the, we want to be an all-star. All-star. Okay. So I think for women, good sex is about focus. Mm. You know, focus on her and sort of attentiveness and being attuned, you know, tuned into how she moves, what she says, how she responds. You know, mm-hmm. that that's kind of and, and kind of I mean, really, I think good sex is you lose yourself in it. Both yeah. parties lose themselves in it. They're not self-conscious. They're one being yeah. you know, in that moment. Not overthinking it. I think that's what I hear a lot. Right. That we're possibly putting too much too thought. Too much thought makes you self-conscious. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, and we're going to be right back. You're listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy, where Dr. Adam Matthews and sex therapist Lori Watson are here to help couples keep it hot. Yeah. 
Wanting Sex Again, How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them, it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com and sign up for their next couples retreat weekend hosted by Lori watson awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible It is one of my great joys in life to be able to really help individuals and couples find strength in their relationships and really find hope again. Licensed marriage and family therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews from Matthews Counseling. I work with a wide variety of issues, including depression and anxiety, marital issues, issues with adolescence. I believe that therapy should be designed around you, that it should be personalized to who you are and to your unique situation. Therapy is available in office, online, and by phone. I want therapy to be comfortable for everyone. At our office, you'll find that we sit around a fireplace in deep, comfortable chairs, look at the problem differently, and offer practical solutions for you to take home and utilize outside of the therapy room. Schedule today and rediscover hope. You can find me on the web at matthewscounseling.net. Matthews with one T. You can contact us through email or phone and find a lot of resources on our website, matthewscounseling.net. Okay, we're back with Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy and your host, sex therapist Lori Watson and my co-host, Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist. And we are here talking about the five mistakes men make in bed. And Lori, we ended that last segment kind of talking about men not being hung up on performance, whether that's genital focus and how well your genital is performing or whether you give her an orgasm or not. And you were saying that the focus has to be on her. Right. Yes. So how do we do that, Lori? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, obviously, stop worrying about the erection. And that's one thing. Men maybe get an erection and they think, okay, I have to complete the act. I have to move to sexual intercourse or I'm going to lose my erection. Yeah. And then I'm going to feel really embarrassed and humiliated. And she's not ready. Hmm. I mean, she's nowhere ready. Because he could have an erection right at the beginning of That's the right. whole thing. So, I mean, either have sex then, but you have to have something left over <laughs> yeah, to, to either give her oral sex or touch her or something so that she climaxes right. too. Okay. But I think for men, yeah, definitely so focus on her. That's just being as concerned about her experience and whether she's enjoying it as much as it is concerned about your own mm-hmm. satisfaction and your own performance. Yeah. That just sounds like good relationship like, advice too. No kidding. Like mutual mutual gratification and, and focusing right. well on her. And I mean, I think I can understand, you know, a man has a body that can climax really quickly and he wants to use that every once in a while, but she doesn't. Yeah. You know, she needs a lot of help. Okay. Not being as concerned about hitting the home run or scoring the touchdown. <laughs> Got it. Okay. I think the next mistake men make, the fourth mistake, is they move too quickly to genital touch. Okay. I mean, women complain every single week. You know, he comes up behind me in the kitchen grabs my breasts and bumps me with his erection or grabs my genitals when I'm in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he thinks that's playful and fun, I'm sure, but she thinks it's invasive. Okay. That seems to me that that another disconnect in kind of just where our focus is and how men and women think about sex and think about Mm -hmm. touching as well because, honestly, men would probably love that. Yes. You know, if if their woman grabbed grabbed their genitals and so – like so, that's just thinking. That's just a <laughs> that's just a difference. Uh, yeah, win for the package. Yeah, I mean, or just grab us in general in any any in any way those, in any way like those yeah. areas. So um, really direct, really yeah. strong. Yeah, because physical touch just tends to be more of a focus for men in general. But then it is more genital focused than I think it is for women. If I you know right. understand, what, and a lot of men initiate that way. You know, they mm-hmm. reach down under the covers and they start stroking her, and she is just way not ready for that. Mm. You know, it's it's you're right. She, he's doing what he would like 
and her body is unresponsive. And truly, if you're unaroused and you're female, it might feel about as sexy as touching her elbow. Mm. I mean, there's just like it until it lights up, until her genitals sort of are lit with arousal, yeah. she can't be more aroused. And I know it's a conundrum, but I think it's a big disconnect for most men. You know, like mm-hmm. why wouldn't that turn them turn, turn them her on. on and that why wouldn't that be a starting point for sex yeah and i think because because and we just li- told them how long it takes her so it's yeah like, that's well, right let's get the party let's started. get the party started <laughs> this is how <laughs> i'm going to start it up you know right like, exactly and so i think it it doesn't make a lot of physical sense for us mm-hmm. and for, it for men in general i, in, in I understand general that and i think for men they can play in the opposite right it's yeah. like you know, she's tentative. She she barely is assertive at all, or she doesn't touch me. Yeah, at or all. she just avoids touching my, yeah. my penis altogether. I know. Right? That's again that kind of understanding, the mutual understanding. It sounds like would be very beneficial to talk about where we're starting, where right. where where we start, because I think men want to know where to start. Most men do yeah. want to know where to start. Yeah, and so yeah, kiss not on the back there. of the neck. Way better than the grab in the kitchen. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> truly. Yeah. Flirting, you have to figure out too, I think, if your partner likes touch or if they like words. Oh, yeah. You know, so, some women really like words and, you know, let's go to bed or yeah. that kind of thing. But, and they're not as responsive to touch and vice versa, I suppose, with men as well. But yeah. you're saying men would love. I, I think a really assertive touch. Again, everything mostly. is yeah. everybody's different. Right, we can't we can't know, but sure. But I, I think, think in for your the most part, yeah, that uh-huh. that touch is going to be the big thing that's going to mm-hmm. signal. Ready. I, we're, Let's go. We're ready. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Yeah. And so knowing, I think knowing your partner again makes a lot of sense as well. Right. Okay. And then I think the last thing, and this is the explicit one, is, you know, men, one mistake they make is they think that they need to stimulate her vagina versus her clitoris. Yeah. And they think that, and so it's intercourse. They got to get to intercourse because they got to stimulate her vagina. Or they put their fingers in not realizing that, okay, actually the clitoris is more sensitive and more sexually oriented than the vagina. Uh, I mean, I've had men talk about, you know, that they think when they finally get to touch her vagina, and when I say her vagina, I mean the canal itself. The whole thing is called the vulva, and and a lot of people call it the vagina, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual vagina, that they think that's where she's most sensitive, you know, kind of the most hidden, special spot. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's the outward part, the clitoris, that is the big deal. Is there a way to approach that differently, like digitally, like yes. oral sex? Like uh, how, yes. Like, but after a while, <laughs> not right in the beginning. Okay. You know, yeah. because again. Well, that goes back to the last point that we were talking uh-huh. about, right? Yes. That there has to be a, a warm up. She has to, she has has to, to ready. feel ready for that. Yeah. I mean, I think teasing is, is one really good way of sort of taking your time. Mm. Coming close, but not really touching. Yeah, um, I think a lot of women would respond to that instead of just the direct grab. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Is this something, Lori, that you feel like, in your experience, women would help educate their men on? Like, was that something they're willing to talk about, or is it uh, something that men need to kind of really explore? And you know, it specifically, I'm talking about the woman's body. Yeah, the technique of yeah. like what makes sense for her. How do men figure that out with their women? Yeah, like, I would say you know maybe 80 percent of the women I see do not help their men with that. Hmm. You know, they're embarrassed to say, even if they can fantasize what it is, they're embarrassed to tell them. And I I know men say just just tell me. Yeah, just tell me so I know. Yeah, but no, I think purposefully left in the dark. Yeah, is the whole game. Because I think one of the things when I think about mistakes, right, there is a part that like I want to know, right? Yeah, and it's unfair. And I think men would be, like you said, would be willing to hear like if there is something that they're doing that is not working or not making Mm -hmm. sense. And so like being told, hey, you're screwing up here. Let's do this better. Yeah. Would. Maybe not say it like that, though, <laughs> ladies. Uh, maybe, you got to spare his ego a little maybe, bit, you know, like, not. hey, I ha- I saw this in a movie or <laughs> I have this idea, <laughs> you know, try to do it positively. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, positive, positively, <laughs> but there, I think for a lot of guys, it's okay to say, hey. I'll, to I'll, be I'll, direct. To be direct, yeah. Like, I, I like it this way. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. All right. Okay, now so now we know the five mistakes. We know how to have mistake-free sex now. <laughs> sort of. Score! Score. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you're listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson and couples therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. Thanks again for all your comments and reviews. We appreciate that. And we'll see you next week. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much.